Hey everybody, James. Tammy's not here, she's uh, in Dillard, so we just got me. Alright. Uh, Arjun Yadav says, Is it safe to use antibiotics in the first or second trimester of pregnancy? If yes, then which is best to use? My female is suffering from cystitis. She was mated 20 days ago. So, um, so the answer is, is we don't give antibiotics if we don't need to, to any pregnant dog. But if your dog needs antibiotics, the, the, the health of your dog is paramount, in my opinion, in this situation. The majority of antibiotics are fine. And certainly, I'm not going to give you a list of which ones I know are fine, because I don't think I do without Googling it. But you can Google this. You can talk to your vet about this. Exactly why you give antibiotics for cystitis, I'm not sure about this, as to whether or not that makes any sense anyway. Um, but, but again, err on the side of caution, try to avoid any medications. And there's certain things, by the way, that you absolutely don't give a pregnant dog. Steroids, that will abort a dog. Do not, that's one way of aborting a dog, by the way. Don't give steroids, don't give vaccinations. So those two things are absolutely off the table. You do not, there's no reason, um, there's no reason, well, there might be, um, there's no reason to give a vaccination because you can wait on the vaccination. So that one, definitely not an issue. Now, if you've got a dog that needs uh, steroids because it's in trouble, then maybe you are going to abort the litter and that's okay. Certainly aborting a litter when it's, you know, six, seven, eight weeks in, this could be a difficult situation. It's going to lead to you having to have a C-section done to clean the dog out anyway. But the antibiotics are probably okay. So there's a long-winded answer for you. Uh, Amy Lillan says, I bought zero to three month old type bottle nipples at Walmart. Pups are three weeks old now and aren't sucking on the nipple. Can a nipple collapse with puppy's teeth start to come in? A week ago, they were doing fine. Well, look, I got an answer for you. Go spend another buck and go buy another brand new bottle from Walmart, see if it fixes the problem. It's a buck, right? Just see if it works. I mean, certainly if, if, if a dog starts to put holes in the nipple, and then it tries to suck on the nipple, you could get in a situation where air is coming in and it wouldn't get any milk. I guess that could happen. Um, and, and also, you are got a dog now that is three weeks old. Pretty soon, you can get that dog onto uh, uh, like Royal Canine Puppy Moose, a starter moose, you know, a very um, consistent, you know, almost gravy-like product and get them off the milk completely. So that's something else that's in your future pretty quick. Um, JP says, I feel so hopeful after seeing your video. Thank you so much. My poor little singleton Maltese little star is having a hard time. She is a chubby swimmer pup and I've been struggling to get her to, to use her legs. I'm seeing how you use the tape to her legs properly. Do you or anyone reading this comment have advice on how I can help little star stop gaining weight? My vet has not been very helpful with this. Okay, so so this is a typical thing that happens when you have a fat puppy and a fat puppies especially happen when you've got no competition for them for milk here's the milk bar nobody else is at it can drink to their heart's content and they get fat as walruses and when that happens and there's no competition their leg back legs just go out behind them they lay on their stomach and it can cause two things it can cause a flat stomach and it causes what called a swimmer puppy where it's, it's not beginning its back legs underneath it because it doesn't have to it's quite content just gorging itself on milk whenever it wants to. It's milk drunk all the time. So how do you fix this? Well, a couple of things that you can do. The first one is, is immediately start taping the back legs up. And I've got a number of videos on this. Tape those back legs up. That gets their back legs behind them. And the only way they can move when that happens is they have to get their back legs underneath themselves. And that gets them up and walking. And they're teetering around on the back legs like this and their front legs like this. And they can walk around. Great. That's what you want. You want to get them off their stomachs because you don't want a flat chest. And you want them to get used to those leg muscles. What about the weight situation? Well, you've got control of it. Limit, limit the access to food. I mean, you know, you want to see a puppy that's gaining. How old is this puppy now? This puppy is... Uh, should you tell us how old she is? Uh, don't think you told us how old she is. I'm reading through it here. Anyway, you want to see puppies gaining half an ounce a day, maybe more. Certainly more as they get older. But look, if they're getting fat and they're still gaining half an ounce a day, limit access to mum. Limit access to food. I mean, that's the only way you could. You can't. If you if you give the dog food, 
it's gonna eat as much as it wants to have. And if that's too much, it's gonna get fat. Same with human beings, you know? Put a lock on the refrigerator door. If you're getting too fat, you know, or if you're getting too fat, exercise is not only gonna help you, it's what the solution is eat less food. It's the same thing for the puppy. Uh, is it illegal, this is uh, Joseph Mesa says, is it Ill illegal to breed and sell Frenchies on Instagram if you live in California? Well, I don't know. I wouldn't think so. No, I mean, I, you know, different states are different on this and I, I don't know the answer to this. So why don't people chime in? As best I know, there's are some rules and regulations that various different outfits have in terms of what you can do, like Facebook and things like this. They don't want you to be selling puppies on their on their on their platform and so you either have to kind of do some sneaky stuff or not do that so what's the worst that can happen by the way the worst i guess you could get your instagram account shut down so maybe that would be a bad thing no, nobody's going to come and see you over this i can tell you that so um, marissa leon can you breed a cream with a black faced form yeah of course so let's get to, let's, I get a lot of these questions about what you can and can't breed and what the problems are. Let's just get back to what you can't breed. Th th these are the things that you should not be breeding. A merle to a merle, don't do that. A merle, a dog that is double merle, likely will have problems with eyesight, hearing, and other problems. You don't breed merles to merles. And historically we know this, so that's why you don't do it. So I can't give you the answer as to why this causes this, but I can tell you that you just don't do it. Merles to merles, big no-no, don't do it. A merle to non-merle, all day long, no problem whatsoever at all. A extreme pied dog to another dog that's going to produce pied puppies. You don't want extreme pieds. An extreme pied dog is a dog that is, looks white and may just have a little splatch of color on it somewhere, maybe on its base of its tail or something. Specifically dogs that have a completely white head are dogs that can suffer from um, um, deafness. And so we don't breed those dogs to produce pieds. Breed that dog to a dog that's not going to produce pieds. So if you have an extreme pied, choose a stud that has no pied whatsoever at all. If you breed to a dog that doesn't look pied, but it's a pied carrier, on average, half of it's gonna be pied. And if it's an extreme pied, you could get this playing in and causing problems. That's it, everything else, everything else, have at it. Just go to your heart's content, don't worry about it. Anything wrong with doing a TCI at a level of 50? I've never had that question before, but it's a good one. So the answer is, Typically, you would be doing a vaginal AI on a 15, and you would do a TCI, which is a transcervical insemination, or a surgical insemination a day later. Why? Because the semen does not have to travel all the way up the vaginal canal, which takes about a day. So if you do a TCI on a 15, you essentially did the AI a day early. And the problem with this is that you've now presented semen where the eggs are, and the eggs are not fertilized enough yet to be able to be conceived. So you're probably okay with it, but but if you had if I had your druthers, you'd rather be doing it on about a 25 or a day later. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I've got some videos out there that are to do with uh, collecting semen from dogs. And someone says, oh my God, this is not what I thought I was looking at. Uh, my dog is covered in lipstick. And anyone know how this, how, I'm not even gonna go anymore on this. Oh God, same person's like, uh, I was not recommended this. I did not click on that. I did not watch the entire video. I swear your honor. <laughs> All right. Oh, these people who want to put their herpes kills on my channel. I don't know whether everybody else gets annoyed at this, but I get annoyed at it. It's like, you're hijacking my channel to sell something that we have nothing to do with what we're doing here. Stop doing it, please. It's just dis disrespectful. It's like, it's got nothing to do with what these, everybody who's watching this does not want to hear about your personal battle with herpes and how Dr. So-and-so magically fixed it. It's all snake oil and we're not interested. Stop doing it. It's just rude. Uh, 
Okay, so this is Warren Chang from uh, from Sri Lanka. Love your videos. Uh, can you do a video on false pregnancies and why and how to stop it? I have several bitches in heat, uh, several bitches in my house, some living in kennels and others outside with me. I have a few blah 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 stop false pregnancies as soon as the heat is over. This may result in little. Okay, well, look, I do have a video on this, and I had a whole series. It's a ten-part series, of which one of the ones in there is um, specifically uh, infertility problems in in female Frenches. Another one, infertility problems in male dogs. Go look at that one and review it. Uh, we do talk about that and and why false pregnancies occur and what you can do to fix it. So ju just before I send you off to go do that, I will say one thing. There is a bit of a difference between a false pregnancy and a pregnancy that doesn't result in puppies. A false pregnancy is a dog that goes through all of the things that you'd expect to see in a dog that is in fact pregnant. It loses its appetite about two weeks in. It has morning sickness. It stops, it's not eating food very well, loss of appetite. Uh, its nipples start getting bigger. Uh, it starts to produce milk. All the things that you expect to see in a dog that's gonna have a the result in a pregnancy does all this but it's completely not bred at all so that's a false pregnancy and the only way that i know of that you can do on this is if you've got a dog that you're not you think it's pregnant but you're not sure if there's if there's a puppy in there or any puppies in there get an x-ray done a few days before you do a c-section so you don't make the mistake of a false pregnancy resulting in a c-section with no puppies inside that's it for this one thanks for watching bye everybody. watching the, the video uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.